Well, when we speak about the history of Jerusalem, uh, of course, we can go back to the late 4th millennium BC or to the 3rd millennium BC and uh, talk about the early Bronze or the Middle Bronze Age. But in my opinion, we need to start in the late Bronze Age because the late Bronze Age illuminates uh, the uh, biblical history, the history of ancient Israel, the periods which are in the uh, eye of the storm of research in uh, recent generations. In the late Bronze Age, I'm speaking about the 15th to 12th centuries BC, Jerusalem, first of all, the land of Israel was under Egyptian domination. Canaan was a province of the Egyptian empire at that time, and Jerusalem was a small city-state in the highlands, uh, as far as we know from the Tel Amarna tablets, which uh, provide us uh, with the historical information about uh, the period we are speaking about the 14th century BC. At that time, there were two <coughs> uh, main city-states in the highlands, between the Jezreel Valley and the Beersheba Valley, one in the north, Shechem, and one in the south, Jerusalem. Jerusalem dominated at that time quite a meaningful piece of land. Uh, when you come to think of it, uh, from the Beersheba Valley in the south, the Shfela in the west, and to the area of Bethel, uh, the plateau of Benjamin in the north. And it was also involved in uh, a political affairs which um, took place far beyond this territory. For instance, uh, we know that Jerusalem was involved in things that happened in the um, Jezreel Valley and the um, uh, plain of Akko. Jerusalem was involved with uh, Bet She'an, which was uh, a center of uh, a, a an Egyptian garrison at that time. And we know all that from the Amarna tablets. And uh, so, so this is the historical uh, background to the late Bronze Age. Now we have to turn to archaeology because I think that here the late Bronze Age is a very good case study because we have reliable historical information, real-time historical information, tablets which were either written by the king of Jerusalem, Abdi Khipa, or people or, or tablets which mention uh, Jerusalem, and at the same time we can look at archaeology. So here we are on safe grounds, relatively speaking. And when you look at archaeology, though Jerusalem is quite a meaningful player on the scene of Canaan at that time, the archaeology of the archaeological remains in Jerusalem are poor, meager, almost nothing. When you look at the city of David, which is considered to be, by many scholars, the heart of uh, Biblical Jerusalem, the ancient mound, if you wish, of Biblical Jerusalem and pre-Biblical Jerusalem in the Bronze Age, the number of uh, finds from the late Bronze Age are uh, almost meaningless. Here and there shards, no building, here and there a wall which possibly can be identified and dated to the late Bronze Age, maybe terracing, things like that. No big building, no palace, no temple, nothing at all. And this raises a question regarding the uh, relationship between the textual evidence and archaeological evidence when we come to uh, evaluate the history of um, Jerusalem in the Bronze and Iron Age. If we take a step back from the Late Bronze Age to the Middle Bronze, indeed in the Middle Bronze Age, remains in Jerusalem are very impressive, especially in the section which was excavated near the Gihon Spring, where the fortifications are almost unparalleled, really. I mean, gigantic, titanic, if you wish. Uh, you can use the either or words uh, where on earth uh, in that area of Jerusalem. Uh, this is important, uh, from my point of view, to demonstrate the ups and downs in the history of Jerusalem. So when we take a step back from the late Bronze Age, we still we are still in the same, some sort of um, cyclic development. Uh, there are several um, periods in the history of uh, Jerusalem with uh, very meaningful remains and uh, which uh, testify to prosperity, to major building activities, to major trade relations with neighboring uh, regions, and so on. And the Middle Bronze is the first of them. And then there are several periods in between which are poor and with meager finds, and they definitely represent some sort of a decline of Jerusalem and the Late Bronze Age in this example. So if we start with the Middle Bronze Age, you have the first tide, if you wish. Then you have um, some sort of a crisis in the Late Bronze Age. By the way, the crisis is all over the country in this case. 
not only in Jerusalem, but also there. And then there is uh, another period of uh, prosperity uh, starting uh, pro probably somewhere in the late 9th century BC, in the time of um, the Judaic monarchy, the Judaic kingdom, continuing in the 8th and 7th centuries BC, and then the destruction and another low tide, uh, a major crisis in the Persian and um, early Hellenistic period, and then the third uh, tide, if you wish, the third period of prosperity in the late Hellenistic period, that is to say in the Hasmon in Hasmonean time. So this is the way I see the history of Jerusalem, if I have to draw it, you know, uh, in one big picture with a very, uh, uh, I mean, uh, non-delicate brush, let's put it this way. Uh, you have uh, three tides and two periods of uh, crisis. And uh, the period of crisis in Jerusalem, because of the location of Jerusalem on the southern fringe of the settled land of uh, the land of Israel, of Canaan, the period of crisis is longer, usually, than in the rest of the country. So if you take the first example of, uh, I'm now speaking demog settlement and demography, okay? Size of the settlement, size of the, demo of the population, and so on. So if you, if you take the, the, the second, uh, the first crisis, which starts uh, somewhere in the 15th century BC, okay? In uh, a place like Megiddo, which I excavate, okay? It ends, let's say, around 1000 BC, before, uh, in the 11th century, when uh, you get another uh, prosperous city in a place like Megiddo. Not in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, the crisis continues in the late Bronze Age from the, let's say, 15th century or late 16th century BC down to the late 9th century BC. So about two centuries later than the developments in the more fertile uh, parts of the country. And the same holds true also for the second crisis. So if I have to summarize this. This is what uh, uh, characterizes the history of Jerusalem. Periods of prosperity, relatively short ones, until the late Hellenistic. After the Hellenistic period is a different story, of course, under empires and so on. And long periods of uh, decline between the periods of prosperity. And we need to ask questions regarding both the reasons for prosperity, on one hand, and the background for the decline.